So I believe we are all here for having business training. How many of us have seen a rabbit before? One, two, three. Just four of us. Wow, five. How many of us have eaten rabbit meat before? You've eaten it. Any other person? That is one of the reasons we are here. Act and manners. We are Act and manners, we are promulgating the gospel of rabbits. We are promulgating the gospel of rabbits. Like I told you the other time, we are into livestock production. We are not only into rabbit production, we produce birds, we produce fish and the like. But we noticed that only few people have access to rabbits. Only few people can buy rabbits. Only few people are eating rabbits. From the uh, question I asked, how many of us have eaten rabbits here before? How many of us have eaten rabbits here? Only my brother have eaten rabbits out of how many of us that are here. If you only know what I can tell you, sir, how does rabbit taste to other meats? Rabbit is not about just the sweetness. I believe as the class, as you continue the class, you will know a lot of benefits that is attached to rabbits. I will not market other livestock uh, animals, but I will tell you that uh, rabbit meat is not just nutri uh, nutritious, it also has some health benefits. Rabbit meat is a meat that from I would like from a shy, a shy to somebody that is aged can eat. There is no restriction to who can eat rabbit meat. And that is why we are promulgating the gospel of rabbits. And Alpha Mana is on a mission to make sure rabbit meat is at least if you walk on this street now, out of three buildings, rabbit meat is going to be a regular meat in somebody's house out of three buildings on these streets. We are on that mission. You cannot get to a cold room today and ask for that business and they will provide, provide it for you. Because people lack the awareness. They don't know what that business is. Even when I was somewhere around there, I was like, sir, I've been taking that business before. That is bush rabbit. You need that bush rabbit. I was like, no. They are, you know, we have different rabbits. So I told him no, that there is this specific rabbit that the meat is this meat. I ah, know and stuff like that because they are not enlightening about it. And I believe after this seminar, all of us here will be a rabbit. All of us here will not just be a rabbit farmer, but we will promote the benefit of rabbits. So that every month, most of the people around us will know about it. And if not just know about it, they will also like to have a taste of rabbit. And believe me, if they taste rabbit once, they will always ask for more. Training outline. We are going to be having the introduction, the rabbit farm management and setup, business planning and management for farm, business model analysis and market opportunities. So I will be taking us through the introduction why the CEO of Ark and Manor Farm will be taking us through rabbit farm management. The Asia will be taking us through the manage, uh, business planning and management for farm. And uh, see you also will be taking on, on the business model, analysis and market opportunities. So as you can see, livestock farming is a crazy branch of agriculture. We, many farmers are currently paying attention to poultry, fishery, cattle, pig, snail, among others. Most of them, like some of us here, we have not eaten rabbit before. Most of these livestock farmers who don't have, they don't have enough information about rabbits. Rabbit farming is a young and highly promising enterprise that is currently growing in Nigeria and the world as a whole. 
Rabbit farming has a high potential, a potential of turning farmers to multi-millionaires within a relatively short period of time compared to other livestock farming. Venturing into rabbit farming gives the advantage of minimal investment requirements and ability to produce, reproduce fast compared to other livestock farming. As we join in, in this class, you will see how profitable rabbit farming is. You will see how you can start with little from your backyard. You don't need to go and rent a big place. You can start from your backyard and you will start breeding rabbits from your backyard. Rabbit production or farming in Nigeria is one of the agricultural business youth and senior citizens can venture into. No, as a youth, most of us, all of us here are youth. It is not just, the farming is not just limited to us. All people too can venture into the business. Rabbits can be used either for meat production, for production, pharmaceutical use, spiritual use, soil facility, pest control, and as pets. Millions of tons of rabbits are consumed yearly. Just in this place alone, you can see the usefulness, the importance of rabbits. This last line alone. You can use it for food production, meat production. They use it to produce some of the uh, drugs that are being made. It is also used for uh, spiritual purposes. Soil fertility. Fertility, rather. Soil fertility, it is their, uh, uh, their waste, their waste product, product is a very good manure for farmers. Why? For pest control, uh, pest control is not the rabbits that will be controlling the pests. The pest control is the urine from the rabbits is used to control pests on the farmland. So we can see that rabbit farm with just this, if you focus on one or two, you will make a lot from rabbit farming. Not just the uh, meat production aspects. This is the wool on the body. The wool on the body is used for uh, uh, those pillows we use, we rest our head on. It is used for the, uh, like a foam inside it, and it's also medicinal. It's also medicinal. If you see some cardigan that you see, the wool on the body is rabbit wool. So, rabbit is is a multiple is used for different things. Rabbit is used, and that is why that and that is why rabbit is you can make millions of naira from farming in a uh, farming rabbit. You can make millions of naira if you know the do's and don'ts. If you know what you really want to achieve from farming rabbit. Rabbit among others, among the top, uh, rabbit are among the top prolific animals in the world. A goat can reproduce one to six times in a year within an average of five kids per kidney. I know some of this time you might not understand, but as you join in, yeah, we are told it can reproduce six times in a year. Six times in a year, how many times of goats we produce? Twice, but rabbits can reproduce six times. And look at the average, average of five, and that is most. Let me just leave it at that. Why we continue? How this is possible? You will know. A meal by hand. Now, the other time I said some of the times here we can't understand. So it is explained. A dog. It is explained in this next slide that a doe is a female rabbit, a buck is a male rabbit, a matured male rabbit is called a buck, 
We are going to be seeing the graphics for some of us that have not seen that before. We are going to be seeing it here like today. The female rabbit is a doe. And I believe when my CEO is lecturing us, educating us on rabbits, he is going to be using some of these terms. He might not tell you, maybe when he's talking, he will tell you a doe cross. Uh, a buck cross a dough, you should know that the buck is the male rabbit. You might not tell you a male rabbit. You might be using some of this time. And that is the reason for the introductory class. And the female rabbit, the baby rabbit collectively are known as litters. So when the rabbit gives birth, maybe it has five, it has eight offspring, they are known as litters. The period of time between breeding and kindling usually is 28 to 31 days, is known as gestation period. Rabbit house is called hush. A bunch of bonnets are known as kitties. So when a doe is giving birth to young one, it is called kindling. Third of time between breeding and feeding. A boss to provide for the doe. Okay, the boss that you provide for the dough to give birth in is called the nest boss. When the dough starts to put nursing material in a boss, it's called nursing. That is when the dough starts removing its air in the boss. And pure, pure breed are parents of the breed. So that pure, pure breed are parents stop. They are the parent stock that give birth to rabbits. Now let us see the identification of rabbits. Rabbits are small, fully mammals with long ears, short. You will see it lies, and you will see it in picture here too. They vary in color. This is rabbits. This is rabbits. This is another rabbit. You can see that these rabbits and these rabbits, they are, two dif they are different species. Yes. So we have over 300 species of rabbits. But the ones that we need during the course of this training, we are going to be telling us some of the important breeds that we need. If you, the ones needed for breeding meat, the ones needed for air, and the life, you will know during the course of the training. So this rabbit here is a standard shishila. This is a standard shishila. Why this one is angora? So identification by sex. You can identify your rabbit. Now the picture I showed you earlier, you don't know whether the rabbit is male or female. You can know, except you know the characteristics to identify them. And now we are telling you, sex can be determined from birth, but if you are not an expert, you will not know. But it's more visible at six to five to six weeks. So if you are not an expert in the rabbit family, you will not identify if the rabbit if uh, the kids is either male or female until it is five to six months. But as an expert, you will quickly identify from birth that this rabbit is male, this uh, kid is male or female. Why uh, male, okay, male gender, when or that, point out like a blunt pencil. The female genital organ is just like a V shape. Like I said, we have over 300 breeds of rabbits. We have over 300 breeds of rabbits. Among them are American Fuzzy, Dwarf, Oti, Havana, Polish. We have American Sebu, we have American Shishila, we have Standard Shishila, we have Angola. We have uh, California. So we have over 300 breeds of 
rabbit. So let's quickly go to the angle. Let's go to the angle of rabbits. Rabbits are fragile animals. These animals, these live shots you are seeing here, they are very fragile. So you have to be careful in the way you handle them. You have to be very careful in the way you handle them. And the way you, these rabbits, if you leave this rabbit on the floor, I bet you will add, you will, most of, all of us here, we cannot catch it. Because it will be flying. It will be flying. So, from the introductory class, look at this rabbit now. What is this one? If you are following from the introductory class. No, not uh, the rabbit now. Yeah, you see a I see a kit. You see a kit. So while this one of these is a box, while the other is a dog. But you can't know until they show you. Rabbit are fragile animal. Thus, care should be taken when carrying them. You need to be careful in order not to damage. You need to be careful in order not to damage their. So there are ways at which you carry them. Don't just carry them anyhow. Don't just carry them anyhow. Look at the way they carry this big. This rabbit might be a dog. This rabbit might be a dog, and it can also be. It might be a buck. Look at the way this rabbit is being carried. So you hold, and this is the most ideal way of carrying a rabbit. You hold, you carry the rabbit from the ears. Don't just drag the rabbit here and just leave it like that. You carry it from the ears and you hold it at the back like this. So you will not stress the rabbit. They are very fragile the way you see them. This is another way. If you notice the guy brought it out the other time. I did not just carry it because I just want to carry it anyhow. There are some parts I'm trying to hold here. There are some parts I'm trying to hold here. So you carry it from the back, you do the back. And look at it, it's trying to struggle and if it's not hold it where it can fall off. So you see another way of carrying it. So this animal, this uh, rabbit, this bunny, is a very lucrative business for those that are ready to follow the do's and don'ts of breeding it. It is now left to you to decide which aspects of rabbit farming you want to go into. You might decide to go into breeding for meat. You might decide to go into breeding for food. You might decide to breed it as a pet. Some people, they breed this rabbit as a pet. They breed it the way some people breed a uh, dog as a pet. You can breed rabbit too as a pet. So you can breed rabbit too as a pet. So that one will take us back to the different type of rabbits we have. So the one you breed as a pet is different from the one you breed as a for meat. The one you breed for meat is different from the one you breed for air, for air production, the food production. So rabbit farming is a very lucrative business, and I believe my boss is going to dig dig deep into why we are here today. Thank you, and remain blessed.